family. How's everybody doing today? What a great worship set, amen? Well, if you could tell, I'm a little bit under the weather this morning, but we're going to make this thing spin. We had a great altar call in our first services, and uh, God is doing amazing things at the worship center. And I'm so glad that when I'm weak, he's made strong. Can you say amen? Yeah. So let's real quickly, let's give a big welcome to our first-time guest, our Brownfield campus, our online and our overflow room. <clears throat> God bless you for being here today, man. I'm excited. We've been in a series for the last few weeks. I think this may be the longest series I've, I've ever done um, until this summer or this fall. I got a longer one coming out on the Beatitudes, and that'll take a long time to fix y'all's attitude. And, no, I'm just saying, it's just a lot of Beatitudes, right? We're going to all get better together. Um, but we're talking about being divinely human, and uh, we're talking about people from the Bible who are heroes of ours, and they should be. But they were humans just like we are. And you need to know that, that you, you need to know that, that God used them in a divine way. And when I say divine, it doesn't mean that we're gods. It just means the one true God is working on the inside of us in order for him to get glory. But we have an anchor verse, and here's our anchor verse. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. So today we're going to be talking about Solomon. Last week we talked about John. And if you missed last week, John's a funny one to go back and listen to uh, because we found out that John was faster than Peter, that John worked harder than Peter. And that Peter fished in his underwear. So if you were here last week, you will go back and say, Pastor Tuck, can you prove that biblically? Biblically, I proved that last week. So go back and check it out. So Solomon did some good things and Solomon did some not so good things. And, and I say that because if you ever notice, uh, when you do good things, blessings come with it. And when you do bad things, not so much. And, and same with Solomon. I have learned that when we do things God's way, he can use us and bless us and use us to be a blessing to others. And that's really what this life is all about. But if we don't do it his way, we limit what God can through with it, uh, can uh, do through us. And when I say this, I know you're thinking, well, duh, Pastor Todd, I know that. But, and I say out loud, I know that too. But if it's duh, how come we don't tap into it all the time? If, if it's such an easy principle, how come that's not an easy principle we walk out all the time where we do things his way and not our way? Am I here all by myself this morning? I, I, I don't know about you, but there's times I know things and just because knowing things and doing things is two different things. Let me just throw that out there. So if you're a note taker, here's write down number one, the divine, the divine side of Solomon. Solomon was a third king. It went Saul, David, Solomon. And, and we're going to pick it up at the point right where Solomon's just been made king right after David's death. 1 King chapter 3 verse 4 says, now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there for that was a great place, a great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings. That's a big deal on the altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and said, Ask, what shall I give you? Now, it was customary when you got made king to offer a sacrifice. And more often than not, that that sacrifice would be one bull. But Solomon gave a thousand bulls. That's a, a over and above offering. That's an extravagant offering, if you will. And then when he gives extravagantly, I want you to notice it moves the hand of God. And God says, ask anything of me. So we don't give to get, but our giving does move the the hand of God. We just see it right there. I hope you're tracking with me. And, and, and we see a great example of how we can't outgive God. What do you mean? God, Solomon gave an offering and God says, ask anything of me. In other words, I'm going to top what you just did. You're not hear what I'm telling you. God says, I'm not going to let you outgive me. I'm going to bless you back. What well, God is a giver. Watch me. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You say, Todd, I don't know if I believe that. Well, I don't care what you believe. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he, you can't love without giving. Come on, somebody say amen. 
I need half a church. Y'all still asleep from last night. Y'all must have had a rough Friday, Saturday. I told 9.30 class, 11.30 class is going to show up, sleep a little bit. We're going to work you up in here in a minute, wake you up some. Verse 6, watch this. And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Verse 7, now, Lord, my God, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father. My father. <laughs> that almost went south, didn't it? I did it both services right there. My father, father, la, 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 la. my father, David. But watch this. This is important. Don't miss this. I'm a little child. And I don't know how to go out, and I don't know how to come in. Well, you know, you read that, and you're like, well, you, you open the door, and you walk out, and you close the door, and you... Co- it sounds simple, but it's actually a military, military term, and what he's saying is, I don't know how to go out in war like my daddy did, and I don't know how to come back in the house of God and worship like my dad did. He said, I don't know how to go out, and I don't know how to come in. David was an expert at this. David had it on lock. You couldn't beat David at warfare, and you couldn't beat David at worship. He knew those things better than anybody. Verse 8, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil For who is able to judge this great people of yours? He recognized right there that these are God's people, not his people. So let me just throw this out in passing. This is a great leadership principle for those that want to be pastors or the one that lead things or or over opportunities. All of you who attend TWC, you're not my sheep. You are God's sheep. You're not hearing what I'm telling you. And so some people, they don't realize that. They'll manipulate people. They'll move them where they want to move them. They'll do what they want to do with them. And that is called spiritual abuse. You don't belong to me. You belong to God. I am just blessed and honored that I get to steward what God has placed in my hand at the worship center. But at the end of the day, you are God's people, not worship center. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And you have to be careful who you place yourself under or else you'll be over in Africa drinking Kool-Aid. In Ghana, come on somebody, you'll wind up in a bus in Waco. Oh, 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 oh. That's still the one that blows my mind. David Koresh is still the one that blows my mind. Everybody talking about he Jesus. There's no way he could have been Jesus. He wore glasses. (laughs) Jesus was opening up blinded eyes. You think he was going to show up and say, hey, bring that blind guy to me real quick. Let me... The glasses should have been a tip. Come on, somebody. I'd have been like, heck no, David. I ain't getting on no bus with you. Not today. Not today, Lucifer. Come on, somebody. You got to be smart, man. But it's called spiritual abuse. You don't know. We've had people that have come to this church from other ministries, and we've had to put them through like a a, a rehab program. That's the God's honest truth because they got so abused by their life. They were like, Pastor Todd, this, this, this. should, Should we be treated like that at church? I was like... No, I said a word in front of that, but I can't tell you the word in front of it because we at church. Come on, somebody. And I said, no. No, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Well, they said it was in Jesus' name. I said, that wasn't in Jesus' name. That was in your leadership name. But you don't know that if you don't know the word. You better get in the Bible. I'm telling you, people will talk you into anything. Remember, they had that one group of people that had all the black class. They was all going to heaven together in the UFO. Remember them people? They had them shroud all of them. Had on them. The only thing that was going to get them then was some Air Force Ones they had on. I'm just saying, man, it's just some crazy stuff that goes on in the name of the Lord. And if it's not the Lord, you don't need to be a part of it. Don't submit to it, man. They are God's people. And so nothing fires me up worse than when God's people get abused by leadership. You should just hear, do I do everything right? Absolutely not. But when I find out it's wrong, I go straight to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Let me fix this. Let me get back to where you need me to be so I don't get stuck on stupid. Come on, somebody, so I don't get stuck on stupid. 
But I want you to see the humility he has here. And he's letting the Lord know. He said, God, I need you. I am nothing without you. If you don't show up, I'm in trouble. But if we're not careful, that switches sometimes to, to we got this, God. We can do this, God. And I'll do my part and you'll do my part. And it's here that you got to be careful that you don't totally switch and say, God, I got it. God, I got, have you ever said I got it and you, you didn't have it before you even left the house? You messed it up on the, out in the driveway, you got messed up. You didn't even make it to the car, come on somebody, and it was all, you probably thought you had it this morning. There's some people like, I'm not going to testify. You're not going to get me to testify up in this church. I can't do it without you. Solomon started here. And, and, and we're going to see a shift in his life where this happens. And, and he asked for wisdom to govern, govern his kingdom, and God gave it to him. And this was amazing until Solomon started trusting in the gift of wisdom more than the giver of wisdom. That's so dangerous when you get hooked on your own gifting. That is so dangerous when you get hooked on your own preaching. I wish somebody would help me this morning. It's so dangerous when you get hooked on your own singing. You don't, you don't get drunk on your own Kool-Aid, Noah. Come on. Noah got drunk on his own grapes, and he wound up butt naked. Y'all go read the story. He ends up butt naked, and his kids got to go in there and see it, and it messes up everything. Getting intoxicated, don't miss this. Getting intoxicated on your own vibe will take you to places that will get you exposed in the worst way. When you get hooked on you, you are in bad shape. You will get exposed good, quick, and in a hurry. And I don't even have time to preach on that, but just trust me. What, but but this, what started this favor in Solomon's life was he told God, I want to help people. That's all I want to do. And you know what God said? God said, I want to help people. Why don't we team up and let's help people together? But, but listen to me. What this, if you a note taker, write this down. This is my favorite part of this whole message. Don't miss this. What does not stay committed to God will always stray from God's original intent. What does not stay committed to God will always stray from God's original intent. You think about it, man. How many times have you come in and out of church? Do I got any real people? I feel like I'm preaching to the wrong church this morning. I know some of y'all been here, then left, then come back, then been here, then left. I've been in and out too before I got saved, all right? So you're not the only one. I'm not the pastor on stage saying, like, I can't believe you went to church and then you quit going again. You sorry. <laughs> I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But what I'm saying is when, when, when we go out, we always stray from what God's original intent from was for our life. Watch this, verse 10. The speech pleased the Lord. Another thing, what he said to God pleased him, that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you've asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself, nor have you asked for riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies. In other words, he, you didn't ask for nothing dumb. That's what God's saying. But you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have have given you a wise and understanding heart. Then look at what God's word says. So there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall there ever be another Solomon. That's a great blessing that God spoke over. There's never going to be anybody like you, and there's never going to be anybody after you. Verse 13. And watch this. I have also given you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor. God says, since you didn't ask for nothing stupid, I'll bless you with everything you didn't ask for because you asked for the right thing. Come on, somebody. When you ask for the right things, God will just bow down in your direction, and he'll give you things that you didn't even ask for, according to this scripture. And, and, and I've given you both riches and honor, so there should not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. Verse 14, this is very important. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David did, if you do this... Then I will lengthen your days. 
If you'll do this, then I'll do that. Remember, we talked about this in week one. We are no longer under that kind of covenant. We are under a better covenant that was supplied by the blood of Jesus, which means when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, we get to go free by how well Jesus walked in righteousness and not by how many times we messed up. I'm so glad that I am judged when I get saved by the righteousness of God and the blood of the Lamb. Is anybody in here thankful for the righteousness of Christ? this morning God wants to partner with us to do amazing things in our life but we got to do it his way and not our way which which I know if you've been to this series you may be tired of hearing this but you have got to crown him king and if he's not crowned king someone or something is sitting in his rightful place of authority in your life and on your heart If he's not there, something else is, and nothing else belongs there but the king. Solomon was the first one to build the permanent house of the Lord in Jerusalem. He spoke over 3,000 proverbs. He wrote over 1,000 songs. He was one of the 48 Jewish prophets. He wrote Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. Come on, somebody. Song of Solomon. Somebody better say amen. Y'all better, well, well, I did a study on Song of Solomon. Y'all go back and listen to that series. That'll help out your marriage, right? Good, quick, in a hurry. Song of Solomon is better than bold and the beautiful, young and the restless, and days of our lives. Huh? All my children, every one of them. Come on, somebody. Song of Solomon, he gets bold in there. He tells old girl, he says, I like your teeth because they all white and they all in the right place. In other words, let me break it down. He said, girl, since you ain't snaggled, me and you could go on a date, right? You got all your teeth in your mouth. I am so proud of you. Look at you there. He says some other stuff I can't say right now because we got preschool kids up in here. But he says some stuff that will help your marriage. Song of Solomon is spicy. I be quoting that to Trish all the time. I said, girl, you were like a gazelle. She's like, what? And I'm your hunter. No, here we go. <laughs> Read your Bible, boy. I'm telling you right now, Professor Pastor, I done got freaky, freaky open. I'm just reading the word of God. <laughs> it's for your pleasure. He wrote that word. Come on, somebody. So, so this guy operated in the divine. He did all of those things. There's no doubt. He's on the throne for over 40 years in Israel. I'm so stupid sometimes. So I'm just, uh, sometimes I just think about how dumb I am in real life. I thought Mike Rangel, my friend Michael Rangel, he texts me all the time. He texts me this morning already once, told me I look like the Juan, Juan Wick instead of John Wick. He said, you look like Juan Wick up in there and all that black. I texted him, I said, Maskin, you my dumbest friend I have right now. Like, so, <laughs> number two, because <laughs> Mike ain't the wisest man, but Solomon was. Here's number two, the humans. Is Michael in here? Where is Michael Rangel? Raise your hand, Michael Rangel. Oh, he's right there. There he is. I see his his wife didn't even want to sit by him. She's ducking her head and everything. She's pointing at him like this Mexican here is the dumbest person I know right now. Let me go to second there. <laughs> Pastor, why you talk like that's how he talks to me. I just want to point it out. All the time. He'd be like, this Mexican here, and I'm like, I am not man. But anyway, here we go, number two. But you would think I am as much tacos I eat. Tacos are life. Come on, somebody. I'm going to give you a good spot to go grab your taco. Y'all been to Asada yet? Boy, go over there, Asada. (laughs) They own daddy left them. They like, there you go. My my kids going to act like that. I ain't going to see it with them in church no more, bless God. Asada will change your life. Them them girls right there ain't never praised the Lord their whole time. I said, Asada, they... Back over here. It's the NyQuil, y'all. It's the NyQuil. I'm on NyQuil. I am not responsible for my actions. I am up on NyQuil. Number two. The human side of Solomon. You don't have me doing that. 
Keep a gangster, Todd. Keep a gangster. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we go. It's number two. The human side of Solomon. I want us to look at the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. Solomon would have known the Torah inside and out. And crazy enough, back in those days, you couldn't Google nothing. You had to tour it. <laughs> and still to Google it, it was tour it, okay? Because Torah told you how to live, um, what to wear, what to eat, what not to wear. We need that law again on what to wear and what not to wear, especially at Walmart. <laughs> and so <laughs> he was a king's son. He would know the Torah. He was the wisest ever uh, to live. Becoming king himself, he would have been an authority over the Torah. Don't miss that. And, and, and let me show you a conversation between David and Solomon when David is about to die. Okay? 1 Kings 2. This is David talking to his son. Verse 3. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses or as it's written in the Torah, if you will, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. So David gives him the advice. He said, don't forget the word of God. Don't forget the Torah. And Deuteronomy chapter 17 starts off with one day Israel's going to want a king. And you're going to put a king over you. And as long as there is a king, make sure that the king doesn't do these three things. You can have a king, but there's three things that king can't do. Solomon would have known that scripture very well. Deuteronomy 17, 16. But he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to the Egypt to multiply horses. For the Lord has said to you, you shall not return that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest he turn his, uh, his heart turn away. Nor shall he greatly multiply silver and gold for himself. Now, the king of Israel should not multiply horses according to what we just read, especially Egyptian horses. And, and I don't know why it said that, but that's kind of weird. But, but it also says he should not have multiple blithes and he should not multiply silver and gold. Let's see how well Solomon did. 1 Kings 10, 14. The weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold. That's equivalent of 22 tons of gold. 22 tons of gold was his annual salary. I like to have a half a ton. Come on, somebody. I, I, I try it out for a week, you know. That's over a billion dollars a year. He would get 44,000 pounds. That's the size of a large fire engine or fire truck made out of pure gold. That was his annual income. His net worth was around 2.2 to 2.3 trillion dollars. And, and you could take the top 10 wealthiest people in the world and combine them. It still does not compare to how loaded Solomon was. So did he multiply gold? Yes, 1 Kings 10, 27, the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. They didn't even count how much silver he had because it was in so much. This guy was so loaded, they didn't even count the silver. But the scripture just said he did. Did he multiply silver? Yes. yes. Did God tell him not to? Yes. yes. Let's go back to verse 26. <clears throat> And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen who stationed in the chariot cities and the king of, at, at Israel. Verse 28. And Solomon had horses imported for Egypt. Did he multiply in horses? Yes. Did he bring them from Egypt when God said don't get them from Egypt? Yes. Now, again, I don't know why God said don't do the horse thing. That's kind of weird to me. But I don't got to understand to obey. If I've got to understand to obey, I will never obey because I don't have enough understanding in my flesh to get the word of God. So I've got to submit my flesh to his word so that I can understand. And when I understand the word of God, when I know better, I do better. Come on, you're not hearing what I'm telling you. And so the Lord says, I don't got, or, or I'm telling you this morning, you, if you've got to understand to obey, you're going to be in bad shape. It'll never work. 
Now watch this, 1 Kings eleven three, And he had 700 wives. <laughs> Princesses and 300 concubines. One boy was busy. And his wife turned, his, turned away his heart. Did he multiply wives? First, let me just say, that's a ton of women living in the same house. That's the dumbest thing he could have done. Let me say number two. You know what you got when you got a lot of wives? A lot of mother-in-laws. I'm just saying somebody that was so wise don't seem so wise to me right now. I'm just, Big Shirley, if you're watching, I'm not talking about you. That don't seem too smart to me. I mean, you got all of these women living in the same house, and he, boy. Remember when we started, though, this, Solomon was young and had passion for God's word. Watch what happens. The older he gets, he starts to compromise. 1 Kings eleven four, For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as, the heart of, as was the heart of his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of Sidians, and after Milicon, the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for the Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Amnon, and he did likewise for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Now, why mention these two specifically in their location? I'll tell you that in a minute, but both of them required human sacrifice. So Solomon built the temple of God on the hill in Jerusalem. When you go to Jerusalem, uh, you're either walking up or you're walking down. The whole t- it's up or down. I mean, all, you're going to lose weight in Jerusalem. I'm telling you that right now. It's a hike. Come on, somebody. You go down to David's city and you come back up. You don't even want to go to Israel no more. You're just like, I'm just going to stay here at David's house. It, well, I forget how far, but it's like this too. j walked it. Jocelyn and Isaac walked it. And they're like, hey, Pastor Todd, do you want to go? I said, no, here, man, just take my camera. Just, <laughs> just take my camera and I'll see what you see through the eyes of Apple. Come on, somebody. I, I am not walking like this. I'm too fat to be walking like this. Can you imagine your legs hurt? How are they going to be walking like that? Because if you walk like this, you soon got to walk like this, and your legs are all. <laughs> and you're trying to come down. You're boom, 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 boom. I got too much weight to go in the wrong direction. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And so, boom, 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 boom. But they built the, 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 the uh, temple of God on the hill in Jerusalem. And, and just one hill over now. According to what we just read, there are two temples built where they are constantly murdering people for a human sacrifice. And if you read on, God's going to say, it's like, listen, Solomon, while you're here trying to worship me, I can't hear your worship because all I can hear are the cries of the people on the hill over next to us because they're being murdered on top of that hill with what you built with your own money and with your own hands. In other words, you took what belonged to God and you gave it to false gods and you, you invested in it. Not only did you do it for your wives, you invested your time and your resources into it. Watch verse 9. And he said, I warned you about this, verse 9. So the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel who had appeared to him twice. That's amazing. God had already showed himself to him twice and he still built a temple for false gods. Have you ever had God do something for you miraculously and you still went back to your old ways? Solomon's the same shape here. Verse 10, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, because you've done this and you've not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I've commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant." He started off great, but he didn't end well. I want to say something to somebody this morning. I want you to catch. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. It's not what you've done. It's what you're going to do. Hey, it's not where you've been. It's where you're going. Can somebody hear me this morning? 
It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And some of you need to hear that this morning. And, and, and here's the other thing. Some of you started out with convictions. And, and you started out with the word of God being your absolutes. This is what, we're living in a world right now where the word of God is no longer absolute. It's open to interpretation. It's open to opinion. Churches are changing things. They're laden. They're, they're ordaining gay people to be pastoring churches now. That's what Pastor Todd, that hurts my feelings. Well, the word of God don't back it. The word of God don't back it. And I'm just saying, you can't, well, you got to go along to get, who said that? You got to stand up for what's right. You got to stand up for righteousness. If you bow down, you're always going. That's why Daniel did not bow down. And when Daniel didn't bow down, they came for him for wisdom and counsel. They put him in the lion's den for not bowing down. And when he got in the lion's den, the lion didn't eat him. They didn't even mess with him. Why? Because he had the anointing of God and the favor of God for not bowing down when everybody else said bow down. Don't touch those topics, Pastor Todd. You won't pack your church. I'm not going to water down the word of God to pack a church because if you've got to water down the word of God to pack a church, guess what? It ain't a church no more. It's just a meeting. The word of God is our standard. The word of God is our track. The word, if you lift up his name, he'll draw all men unto him. I'll never do it. I'll never prostitute myself for a crowd. I know what it's like to preach to seven people. I don't preach no better to seven than I do thousands. Why? Because I'm not in charge of my gifting. I gave it to him. I'm just in his hand. You're not here. I'm not drunk on my Kool-Aid. I know if God don't show up, we are in trouble. I know if God doesn't anoint Todd, Todd is in trouble. It's not me. It's all about him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm not going to bow down. You at the wrong church where he'll give up. He'll go back. No, I'm not going back to Egypt. I've been delivered. We started out with convictions and we started out with the word being our attributes and we drift from them. And, and we just heard a story where it's not going to go well. Even this, this year, some of us started out. I did the series, The Blessed Life, of the first of the year. And, and people were like, started tithing like they never tithed before and started giving. And that's all stopped. You've gone off the rails. And, and again, I want you to see this. You stopped giving, but TWC kept going. Why? Because you're not our provider. God's our provider. And when I say this, I hope it makes sense to you now. I don't want something from you. I want something for you. And I want you to have the blessed life that God's word says that you can have. And if you don't believe it works, then tell me, how did you stop giving? And we kept going and we kept growing. Because it's all about, are you hearing what I'm telling you? It's all about him. And, and so I, I just tell you, you got to get back in. And, and, and if you missed that series, go back and check it out. But listen, it's not enough to start. You have to finish. First Timothy 4 says this. I have fought the good fight. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Sometimes you got to preach the scriptures to yourself. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So I'm going to read this. Like if I'm in jeopardy or am I in trouble? Is that okay? First Timothy says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And now the prize that awaits me is the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. If you stay faithful, you're going to get crowned with a crown of righteousness. Can you say amen? And Galatians 6 says this, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. And you may be here this morning and and you're like, Todd, I'm wore out. I'm fatigued. I'm battle worn. Can I give you a scripture, not my opinion, but let me give you the word of God. Because if I give you my opinion, it'll go right here and fall. But if I give you the word of God, it'll remain forever and ever and ever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain forever. Can you say amen? 
Ephesians chapter 6 says it like this. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the power and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil and heavenly realms. So what do you do? Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm there. How? With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the belt breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions. How many occasions? On all occasions with all kinds of prayer and all kinds of with requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people and God's people said... That's how you keep trucking when you want to give up. You put on the armor of God. That's the only way you can do it, man. You can't fight from where you are. You got to let God fight your battles for you. And the shield of faith, that's a bad one right there. It says it quenches the arrows. It's just a punk demon after you anyway. He's already been defeated. You realize you got somebody that's already lost still trying to win. Ain't nothing worse than somebody know they ain't already lost. You lost. Like last night, Canetto took old boy out. De La Hoya was... mm, He ruined him. De La Hoya, Cinco de Mayo. Come on, somebody. Took him out. There's nothing worse when you can't... And you got a demon up there just... He... Pew. A sissy demon. Come on, somebody. It is a sissy demon in this world right now. Ooh, I'm stepping on toes. People get quiet when I talk about things. I'm just saying what the Bible says. Y'all don't get mad. Get mad at God. Oh, that's right. You can't get mad at God because he's God. You can, but it ain't going to go well for you. What you going to... Let it lighten it one time while you're doing this. You'll never do it again. <laughs> Thunder one time, huh? All of a sudden that ACDC something. Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck. One time while you're giving God the what for. God, I tell you this. And I, I digress. My bad. It wasn't me. It was my wife. She's the one. Listen to me. You got the divine side. You got the human side. Here's number three and I'm done. Which side are you on? Because if you like me, sometimes I'm divine and sometimes I'm human. Anybody in here relate? Sometimes I think I got it all together and I find out I ain't got it all together. Paul said it like this way. That that I want to do I find myself not doing. And the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing all the time. Oh, wretched man that I am. If Paul, who wrote most of our doctrine and our theology, could have a struggle, I think it's okay that you have a struggle as long as you don't have a stumble. There's a difference in a struggle and a stumble. And sometimes we don't know the difference because we swayed too far from our convictions. Let me fix this air conditioner real quick. I see y'all all covered up. I'm going to turn the heater on. I'm going to preach on hell. Let me fix this real quick. 
Y'all mess around and find out today. Should go off in a minute. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're going to make TWC. We're going to turn it down cold make some TWC blankets. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Listen, we can live our lives in such a way that we can see the hand of God work even more. And, and that is what we need. But in order for that to happen, we have to come down to our, it comes down to our choices. What are you doing? What are you deciding? You can only be a partaker of God's divine nature when you made him Lord and Savior. You got a kingdom. Solomon had a promise from the Lord for the very beginning. Don't miss this. But I believe he tried to make it happen rather than just obey and trust God. He forced the issue. And when you force the issue, it doesn't go well. Look at this. Proverbs 3, 5 says this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways. How many ways? All, all your ways. Acknowledge him and you shall direct, he shall direct your path. You know who wrote that? Solomon. I'm telling you at one time he knew it, right? Look at what. Let me read the, verse, the rest of it. Verse 7. Don't get wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. What happened? What happened? Again, it started with a little compromise here and a little compromise there. You know, it won't be, it's just one beer. It's just one puff, puff, pass. It's just a couple of lines. It don't make me an addict. Only an addict would say that. How you know? Because I used to be an addict. You could judge me on your way home. You're already here. That's 33 years ago. Okay, only addict. Come on, somebody. Yeah, only an addict. Go. I ain't got a problem. I don't need help. And you got vomit all over your shirt. You on your third DWI? You on the superstar list of Lubbock County mugshots? You're on your fourth marriage. You got babies all over the place and you ain't raising none of them. Dogs have sex and they throw litters. And we see people dropping litters all over the... Anybody can throw sperm, but it takes a man of God to stay and raise that sperm. I can see y'all not ready for me. I don't water it down. We're going to go to another church next week. We'll go to another one where they'll water it down. We're not going to water down stuff here. I ain't got time to water down. Why? Because there's a real hell trying to catch you. There's a real hell trying to catch you. And I'm just saying, man, there, there are things. Look, little sin turns into big sin and big sin kills, yeah? Right? Nobody, I said this last week, nobody ever raised their hand in second grade and said, when I grow up, I can't wait to be a meth addict. Huh? Nobody raised their, I can't wait to be on my fourth, fifth DWI. I can't wait to get my, fel my first felony. It just happened. Why? We drifted. We drifted, man. This is what sin does. Sin will make you pay what you never said you would pay. It'll make you stay longer than you said you would ever stay. And it'll make you do what you said you would never do. Only to find yourself doing the very thing that you hated that somebody else did to somebody you love. I'm preaching better than your amen. They did it to somebody else, and you, man, you raised, oh, man, you, were, you had a holy hell day that day. I can't believe they was like that. Da, 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 da. And you did the same thing. Why? We drifted. We didn't mean to. We got there. How? Proverbs, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding hands of sleep, and poverty will come on you like a bandit. You know who wrote that? Solomon. And as I close today, I want to say something to our dads. David was a great warrior. David was a great king. David was a great worshiper. David was a man after God's own heart, but he was a terrible father. Horrible dad. 
multiple times there were disputes in his family where David could have just stepped up and said something but he hoped it would work out rather than lead the way out Solomon said I don't know how to go out I said don't forget that Solomon said I don't know how to go out and I don't know how to come in nobody knew how to do that better than David David was known for going out to war and coming back to worship he had it on lock but somewhere in between king he forgot to be a dad because if he would have been leading his family the way he should have been leading it Solomon would have never said I don't know how to do these things I don't know how to do these I know how to throw a baseball I don't know how to worship I know how to run a route but I don't know how to pray I know how to get a medal I know how to get awards but I don't know what I got to do to receive a crown I'm just saying maybe we drift and we put some things on the throne of our heart that shouldn't be on the throne of our heart you saying Todd are sports bad absolutely not I did all, my son did all those things but what my son did not do at Friendship High School, every Wednesday, they try to go football. He was on varsity team. I said, no, no, we're going to church. And his coach said, well, he'll lose his starting job. I said, we, we ain't going to have football in heaven anyhow. And you ain't got nobody better on this team than my son. He'll start. I told him just like that, he'll start. And guess what? My son started when he went to church. Why? Because God gave him favor. When you don't bow down. When you don't bow down. And you see, Hunter, Hunter ain't that big. He was the center at Friendship High School. The smallest person on the line. He's the only one that's not eating like 17,000 pounds of food a day. Started on the line. Started, how? God gave him favor. I'm just saying, when you do things God's way, it changes. And so I just want to say to our dads, man, just, just make sure that you're not absent from passing the right things down to your son. He didn't teach him how to be king. He didn't teach him how to be a warrior. He didn't teach him how to be a worshiper. And if there's part of you that's been broken and you're walking in it right now with your own kids, if you don't teach your kids and, and know for yourself how to go for your identity to God as your father, then they'll start looking in all the wrong places. If you don't get healed from what happened from you, then you're going to bleed on other people. You've got to get healed. Have we drifted? Have we compromised God's word? Listen, it doesn't matter how far you've drifted. It's only one step back to God's original design for your life. God had a better plan for Solomon. We read it. We read it and he drifted. I'm just saying it's time to get back to the Father and get healed. And be whole and let God's way be our ways again. Can, amen. Are you here? Todd, are you telling me you've never blown it? I said, absolutely, man. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had to go to my son and say, hey, look, that's, that's not how a man talks to his wife. What you just heard me say to your mama, that's not how you talk to a woman. Here's what's crazy. I would lit I've literally said things like this to me. If another man had talked to my wife like I just talked to my wife, I would knock him into next Friday. Isn't it crazy that I'll talk to her in a way that I wouldn't even let a stranger do it? And I'm going to say, she's the love of my life. We just do it because we think they're not going nowhere. I need some help. Let's get quiet. They're ride or die. you got to stay for this. No, you don't got to stay and be a punching bag. You don't got to stay down and get talked to like you're trash. A man's role is to love his wife the way Christ loved the church. You know how he loved the church? He gave. He laid his life down so the church could have life. He was more invested in the church than he was himself. I'm just throwing things out there for you to think about. I had to go tell my son, man, that's not what you do. You don't handle things like that. And I don't handle things the way my dad had. My, look, I had a great dad. Some of y'all know my dad, but my dad didn't get saved until I was like 11 or 12. So before that, man, I didn't get spanked. I got beat. My dad would have went to jail for the way he handled me. But you know why he handled me that way? Because that's the way his dad handled him. He didn't know anybody better until he got around some godly men and he realized, man, you don't, you don't, you don't 
don't handle your kids this way. And I believe in spanking. I spank my son. Come on, son. I, I do. I spank my son. But I believe if you're striking somebody after three times, you're hitting out of anger. I believe that with all of my heart. You got to do something bad to get three licks from Todd. Now he's too big to get licks. Now I just choke him out on the wall. That's it. I'm just saying my dad reproduced. Watch me. He reproduced what his dad did. And I tried it at my house. When we lived in the house. All our houses had holes in the wall because my dad had anger issues. And we had no money. I don't know why this man's punching holes in the walls. We ain't got money to fix. But he, I guess he's trying to get us some better air conditioning. I don't know. But he, we had holes and everything we had. Me and Trish got married and I tried that stuff. I, and I, here's the bad thing. Not only we ain't got no money, I can't fix nothing. So I'm like, shoot, we ain't getting our deposit back for sure. We are dying. And Trish looked at me. She said, I'm not going to live like this. I said, oh, yeah, you're going to live like this. My mom put up with this. He said, I ain't your mama. So I will tell you, I didn't get my anger under control for godly reasons. At first, I got my anger under control because I didn't want to be divorced. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Like, well, what? You, that, that's an option? You could just leave? Really? Psst. You ain't no ride or die. She goes, no, I am. Why ain't you saying? I'm just not a doormat. I had to change some things. And then I had to go to God because then it started creeping back in. I'm like, oh, she's going to leave. I got to get right. I'm going to get her left. Come on, somebody. Right. I'm just saying, man, there's things that get passed to us as men that are some great things. There's some great things I can tell you my dad taught me that bailing wire and duct tape, best tool in the world right there. Best tool in the world. Great things he taught me. But I remember my dad mostly being a deacon in my church, for going to the hospitals, for praying for people, for reading this Bible. He didn't even know how to read. That's God's son. You give my dad a newspaper, you might as well give him a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> That's sorry right there. But it's the truth. He would just look at it. But he could read the Bible. Somehow God gave him the ability to read. He only went to school to sixth grade. And he had to quit because he'd already been in there six times. And so <laughs> That's what he told me. So I'm just, but that's, I, I don't remember the bad things because he broke all those iniquities. So there may be some of you today that need to break some of those iniquities. My son doesn't act anyway like that. He didn't have the anger issue that I have. I love that he doesn't have that. But it's not because of me. It's because I took it to the Lord and said, God, I refuse to raise a son that raises his fist rather than I refuse it. So here's what I want you to do, man. I just want you to bow your head at all of our campuses. I know I went a little longer, but... All of our campuses, bow your head. Holy Spirit, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me as a dad? Are you talking to me as a husband? Are you talking to me as somebody that's drifted away? I, don't, I didn't mean to drift. I didn't set out to drift. It just kind of happened. Before I knew it, I had drifted. I didn't know. Maybe you're here today and you haven't been to church in a long, long time because you, you drifted. Things happen. Life happened and you drifted. I'm, I'm not so concerned like the prodigal son. I'm not so concerned as what caused you to drift. I just want to say that all I know is my son was lost and now he's found. That's what the dad says. So you're here today. No one's looking around. We'll just be honest at all of our campuses. You say, man, Todd, that's me. I got some issues as a father and as a husband that I need some help on. If that's you, can I see your hand? My hand's up. As your pastor, my hands up. Pray for me, please. You don't pray for nobody else. Pray for me. Once you raise it, you can put it down. Maybe you're here this morning. You'll be honest and Pat, Todd, I've got these things that have been passed down to me. My dad did this. My grandfather did this. And I just need to break that off. If that's you, can I see your hand? You can be a woman or a man in that. Yeah. Okay. How many of you here? You'll just be honest. Last one kind of drifted you don't know how you drifted you just kind of drifted and you know you're not where you're supposed to be and you know you need to change some things whether you come and let me pray for you or not you'll just acknowledge you drifted a little bit can I see your hand yeah okay I get you okay so here's what's going to happen once you raise it you can put it down here's what's going to happen at all of our campus South Campus Brownfield our worship team's going to play a song 
And as they're playing this song, if you raised your hand or you need prayer for anything, anything, never go to church and need prayer and leave there without it. As they play this song, if you need prayer, I want you to come. All right? I would turn this back over to our other campuses, but if you need